China and India are two of the world's worst polluters. The US and EU are also in the ranking. But everyone wants to charge their phones and laptops, listen to podcasts while commuting to work in a car. We want a green world, but with cheap energy. We want our green cake and eat it too. Do join me, Jan Darash, for How We Got Here. Many believe that the condition of the EU's climate agenda is far from ideal. The Green Deal, which aims to reduce the EU's greenhouse gas emissions by 55% by 2030, got off to a promising start after the adoption of several significant pieces of legislation, including a ban on the sale of new internal combustion vehicles from the year 2035 and a new carbon border tax. Increasingly, however, Europeans are seeing difficulties in keeping up with the pace required for changes to be effective. A major threat to the bloc's green energy transition is the alarming number of Chinese and American companies entering the EU's energy sector. Although no detailed quantitative data on China's share of the European energy market is currently available, the country holds 80% of the world's clean technology production capacity through 11 branches, from solar panels to lithium-ion battery components. Taking advantage of Europe's sovereign debt crisis, in early 2010s, Chinese investors jumped into action for the first time to acquire significant stakes in European sectors long considered domestic, such as power transmission and distribution networks. Although the main focus was countries such as Portugal, Italy and Greece, Chinese investors also acquired networks in Luxembourg. Moreover, China's green technology industry has flooded Europe with cheap solar panels and electric vehicles. The stakes for Europe's energy future are even higher as China is not the only country with ambitions for the EU. The United States also wants to take advantage of the bloc's poorly thought-out energy strategy. Partly filling the void left by Moscow, the United States has become a leading producer and exporter of LNG to Europe. Beyond energy supply issues, EU member states are struggling to develop a common vision, highlighting the challenges of sovereignty and strategic autonomy. The main challenge for Europe is to end one dependency without falling into another. To replace imports of climate-damaging fossil fuels, EU member states need to accelerate and coordinate the development of their green technologies. I'm delighted to welcome today Julia Tzedeiko, an energy analyst at Politica Insight. Welcome to the program. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, we'll start off with China, our subject today. And as we were talking earlier on, it's both a huge polluter and a huge investor in green technology. Can it reconcile those two th things in its own policies? I believe so. China has been uh, growing clean um, tech uh, sectors for years, even decades, and uh, has become a global leader in uh, critical raw materials, um, indispensable for batteries and numerous um, uh, clean technologies, as well as clean technologies themselves. Um, uh, China is producing um, uh, f uh, a fair share of the global EV fleet, um, electric vehicles, um, and uh, solar panels. Um, for instance, um, in Europe, in the in the EU, 97% um, of the imported solar panels come from China and um, remain the bulk of the panels that are installed. So there would have been no um, solar boom in Europe if it weren't for China. What about the actual process of making things like uh, solar panels and car batteries, uh, lithium batteries? Um, do they require much more cost and much more, do they do much more damage to the climate and to the earth as in the process of making them? Indeed, that is a big controversy with um, some of uh, clean technologies that they um, impact the uh, environment the, um, as well as the local community um, greatly, which is why uh, China can uh, overcome um, those uh, controversies um, because 
mm, the, mm, the policy it is uh, leading is, is not very attentive to those concerns uh, as opposed to Europe or Western countries, um, for example. Uh, so the question whether um, uh, Western countries can um, somehow match or even uh, pose any serious threat to China's dominance in raw materials, for example, is very valid. Um, on the other hand, um, the development of uh, clean um, technologies requires lots of lots uh, of uh, energy uh, itself, which is why right. uh, China is uh, continuously endangered by um, energy security concerns. Um, uh, it is seeing them, and hence uh, new approvals for coal power plants uh, in China, uh, which are uh, drawing um, uh, concern as well uh, from climate activists, as well as um, I would say the consistency of climate policies worldwide um, because it is easy to um, justify uh, a, a, a slow uh, transition elsewhere by the fact that China is uh, still uh, the leading global emitter and still uh, approving uh, new coal. The, I'll, take the, I'll take you up on that point about the uh, um, climate activist thing. Um, we seem to be very keen on lecturing, or certainly climate activists, Greta Thunberg, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex seem to enjoy uh, lecturing the world on being green and eco-friendly and all that sort of stuff, and yet they don't necessarily direct their criticism as much to China and India. Is that a, 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 um, a valid criticism, criticism of the West and its outlook? I think it makes sense to uh, criticize um, the uh, policies of your home, home country uh, rather than the country on the other side of the world. Uh, so I do see a logic in the uh, rhetoric of, um, uh, of let's say, top climate activists in the Western uh, world. Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, China or the developing countries, uh, it's a valid question whether China is or is not a developing country, uh, but um, it's not like uh, climate activists are only active uh, in Western countries. Um, they, they do exist um, um, uh, all over the world and, and, and um, um, work on the uh, cause of um, um, transitioning away from fossil fuels. Um, I believe many voices are necessary and they um, in the um, in the fight against climate change and it's not necessarily like some are more valid than others. Uh, the energy transition is about the economy, is about the um, the historic, I would say, uh, opportunity for for um, for investments, as well as um, a concern for the environment and um, uh, local communities as well. Okay, does this mean that India and China have their economic, or oh, sorry, the, uh, their uh, ecological activism, activist movements that are as strong as some of the ones we see in the West? Yes, they do. If you look at the um, crowds um, that are gathering um, outside um, uh, COP venue, uh, which is the, um, the major uh, climate summit um, organized by the um, UNFCCC, the United Nations um, um, uh, Secretariat, uh, you see a very diverse crowd. It's not just uh, European activists or American activists uh, who are protesting and demanding more uh, ambitious climate action. Um, um, activists are actually coming from all over the world and the concern um, about climate change is um, very strong in developing countries including China because uh, China is kind of um, I would say both a developed and developing country depending on how you look at it. Um, this, surely this means that we have to follow China's pace whatever it whether it proceeds to go quickly or slowly or doesn't not want to do it at all Unfortunately, China is the biggest biggest player. We certainly uh, do see we, as a um, let's say collective West, uh, do see the need to um, um, try to make our industries more competitive um, towards China. The U.S. is um, uh, working on it with the Inflation Reduction Act, the major uh, legislation, um, um, the major uh, bill that allows American producers of uh, clean tech to um, uh, to uh, get uh, tax credit 
benefits and um, benefits for uh, manufacturing their technologies in the US. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, the uh, EU, while it does not have a similar um, tool uh, similar to the Inflation Reduction Act, it has very ambitious climate policies as well as we know, um, and is directing considerable um, um, uh, funding uh, uh, towards uh, clean tech. It's just that uh, it's not really the same clean tech that China specializes in. China remains um, uh, dominant in uh, batteries, uh, remains dominant in uh, solar panels, obviously electric vehicles, um, but um, also um, smaller technologies like, for example, smaller and uh, maybe not so um, uh, spectacular, uh, but uh, quite important as well, like sm smart meters, for example, which um, we have to um, install very quickly um, in um, replacing the uh, old meters that many households, um, um, for example, in Poland, um, still operate. Um, the smart meter, meter will allow a household to use um, something that's called a dynamic tariff, which um, uh, allows us to um, uh, control our energy consumption based on the um, availability of clean energy and um, by extension its um, wholesale uh, price. Um, uh, and the companies that are responsible for the installation of the new meters um, are feeling the uh, pressure to um, speed up um, uh, with the process uh, and so they are um, uh, actually uh, buying um, uh, lots and lots of meters uh, that come from China this way or, or, or the other uh, while um, those technologies are actually potentially posing uh, cyber security concerns um, they um, are not as tested or regulated as um, as appliances coming from the EU. So there are many angles to the story of how China is um, impacting the energy transition in Europe and how it is uh, allowing for, for the energy transition in uh, Europe to uh, happen. I would say that as Europe is trying to become more independent of China uh, in the, um, in the uh, um, energy transition process, it kind of has to find that sweet spot, that, uh, that perfect balance between um, uh, importing cheap technologies um, from China and elsewhere. Well, how can, so how can we reconcile... becoming more um, autonomous. So how do we reconcile China as a threat and also as an economic partner? Um, I think... Uh, Buy stuff from China, but yet it threatens us in terms of what you've said about the... Yeah. This uh, uh, information eavesdropping that we're, we're frightened about? Possibly. Uh, I believe um, the path to, uh, or at least potentially, the path to such a reconciliation could be negotiations, something that is happening um, um, even now as uh, the EU is trying to uh, negotiate um, uh, EV uh, tariffs uh, with uh, China. Yes. Uh, a very, um, uh, a very um, uh, important story uh, to follow uh, right now in terms of EU-China uh, cooperation, but tariffs are also actually quite important in the China-US uh, relations uh, in terms of, uh, of um, um, the energy transition. Can we uh, reconcile China both as a, as a partner in this green revolution, a leading role in its um, trans energy transformation, and also because we also see it as a threat to Western values, for Western, Western society, for want of a, uh, a general word, a threat. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that reconciliation is necessary if we are to meet our climate targets. Um, uh, there, there are no um, um, ambitious climate targets without Chinese technologies, at, at least at the moment. Um, so. Um, uh, as we negotiate um, the terms of that cooperation between uh, Western countries and um, and uh, China, um, uh, as we um, as we progress the energy trans transition, um, I believe, um, uh, like with the topic of tariffs, uh, which are hotly de debated uh, right now in Brussels, but uh, many European capitals really, as well as Washington and the uh, um, US, uh, there are um, numerous stories to be told 
um, uh, about the cooperation of uh, China and the West. And China is quite open to that cooperation and to those negotiations. Um, it, uh, it knows that uh, all of that effort it is putting into growing their climate um, um, uh, technology sectors um, goes to waste if there is no demand from, from Western countries, the most ambitious countries on the path um, on, on, um, of, of the energy transition. So can it not satisfy its own booming economy? Billions of Chinese want to uh, charge their iPhones and laptops and drive around in cars and all that stuff. Can't, doesn't it have the... Does it, does it need Europe for this? Or does it, can it satisfy its own energy requirements? I uh, yes, I do think China needs Europe to to charge all of those iPhones because um, uh, it is the West that um, that uh, remains a major um, recipient of uh, of uh, their products and and services. So um, without without that demand, um, China cannot um, grow its economy at a pace that they want. So it's got us where it wants. Exactly, and the other way around. Uh, it's just a matter of um, 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 taking uh, those negotiations um, in a direction uh, that um, answers our concerns, uh, addresses our concerns in terms of cybersecurity, in terms of security of supply, in terms of uh, strength of our own industries, um, some room for our uh, uh, of, uh, industries to uh, grow in those same areas. Um, uh, and uh, at the same time uh, creating a um, uh, favorable um, uh, environment for China. Um, that uh, compromise has to be hammered out in the next few years, I believe, because the energy transition has to um, speed up on the one hand. On the other hand, it is the next uh, um, term of the European Commission that will be dedicated in the area of climate policy to growing the competitiveness of um, uh, uh, European industries, um, making Europe more resilient in terms of um, the, um, um, the supply chains for clean technologies uh, and, and more independent of China. So um, that sort of a new deal um, uh, in cooperation between, um, uh, let's say, in this case, the EU and China, will probably have to be born in the next few years. We've had a rather rocky relationship with China. It's uh, pirated lots of in intellectual property stuff, uh, uh, technology. Uh, are, you, are you optimistic about negotiating on a level field with China? It's going to do what it wants, doesn't it? Isn't it? Mm, I think it's too early to tell. Uh, I wouldn't want to um, make a major assessment here because uh, those uh, negotiations and that cooperation is uh, so dependent on uh, geopolitical uh, factors uh, which are difficult to predict. It is difficult to uh, know uh, what um, uh, direction uh, will China uh, take with regard to Ukraine, for example, but, but not only Ukraine, um, um, many geopolitical factors are uh, at play here um, and um, and a, and a very very important uh, uh, factor in uh, worldwide climate policy in general uh, will be the US elections um, uh, this year um, the outcome of, of uh, those elections will be um, uh, will be of utmost importance to climate policies worldwide because um, Donald Trump is already uh, quite clear um, about the, his intent to uh, roll back um, most if uh, if not yeah. all of the ambitious policies introduced by Biden, including the Inflation Reduction Act, which is all carrot and no stick. Um, as we draw our discussion to a close, can you, if you can look into a crystal ball in 50, 60 years' time, how do you see the world? Is it going to be a silent world of no car engines, everything quiet, push button? How do you... How do you or is it going to be a dystopian world ruled by China? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I wouldn't bet on uh, either of those scenarios, <coughs> unfortunately. Uh, but uh, mm, in 50 years' time, the world will certainly not be as it is now. Um, even in the best-case scenario, we are uh, heading towards 
major impacts of the of climate change um, and the, um, the focus on the climate adaptation uh, in the um, um, international negotiations on climate actions uh, on climate action as well as um, uh, in the EU is not a coincidence uh, we are going to be looking at a less stable world in terms of climate, in terms of um, nature. Uh, it is up to us to, um, to uh, decide, really, uh, to what extent those disruptions will um, change um, our lives. Well, uh, I think I won't be around in 50 years' time. That's maybe a good thing, for sure. But Julia Tadejko, thank you very much for coming on to our programme today. Thank you very much. Great, pleasure to have you. So that's all we have time for. Do join us next time for How We Got Here.